Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your top 10 global weather extremes for Friday, the final Friday of September. Number one, we kick off with a new tropical storm forming out in the Atlantic. This is going to be Hurricane Sam. This is going to be a serious storm. It's worth keeping an eye on because it does come in to the Caribbean slash Caribbean. We had that discussion the other day. So the storm is going to deepen and move in towards these populated places. The National Hurricane Center suggests it will get up to a, a major hurricane. That's what the M stands for on the letters here, major hurricane. So this gets very close to these island nations. Let's take a look in more detail. Category three is what is expected. This area here suggests that the storm may stop or slow down and that could then weaken it. So there is some good news that it might fall apart, but in saying that, Category 3, that close to places like Guadalupe, means you do need to keep a close eye on this one because it could impact places like the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and even as far south as Barbados. So this is a serious storm, even though it does show some signs of weakening as it moves into those areas. Category 3, that close to places like Guadalupe, means it is worth keeping an eye on. Okay, moving around now to the Western Pacific and our next storm system, a developing typhoon right near Guam. So this one's going to deepen further in the days ahead as it moves out into the open waters here. This is the breeding ground for the world's largest tropical storms out here in the Western Pacific. So always worth keeping an eye on uh, these sorts of systems. Now the Philippines here, Taiwan and China, but I think actually the Japanese islands are probably more exposed to the system at the moment based on the tracking. So uh, typhoon out at sea, it's called Mindul, at least that's how I think it's said. They don't give a pronunciation guide to these storms. Uh, but it moves in. You can see the islands south of Japan, Shanghai, Korea up here. So I think everyone from Taiwan up to Japan should keep a very close eye on this storm. It is going to get deeper and stronger in the days ahead. Got another tropical storm. This one's not going to be a typhoon. It's coming into Vietnam at the moment. Tropical depression as it moves through Thailand. Now the wind isn't going to be the main feature with this event. It's just like the tropical storm you had the other day. This one's going to produce very heavy rain, isolated slips and flooding, and uh, mudslides as that system moves through and dumps just a lot of rain. More of a rain event than a wind event and the humidity, which is already pretty tough at the, this time of the year, will increase even further as that storm system moves on through. Number four, nothing tropical with this one. This is a colder one with Arctic winds as we go to number four. Two low pressure systems working in tandem. It was snowing yesterday in Reykjavik. We've got more snow coming in today for Iceland. Not so much snow in the way for Scotland, but showers and those cold westerly winds because it's coming out of Canada and Greenland as it moves on through and snow all the way up the mountains and ranges here around Norway and Sweden. So we take a look at the snow accumulation maps you can see that snowfall getting right up even to some parts of Finland. Iceland's really the area that's seeing the heaviest of the snow, most of that into the mountains and the central plateau area through that uh, nation and down into the United Kingdom. Like I say, just a few rain showers are forecast there. The next system, number five on our list, takes us back into America and Canada. This is around Alaska. We've got another low pressure zone bringing in heavy snow to the mountains close to Anchorage and all the way down the mountains as far south as British Columbia. So the snowfall accumulation map here shows the, that heavy snow east of Anchorage up in the mountains where all the beautiful glaciers are, and then it comes in towards parts of Canada. So around Whitehorse, you'll be seeing snow around you. I don't know if it'll snow so much in Whitehorse, but certainly around you. Juneau's got snow on the mountains, but as you go further south into British Columbia and down towards Vancouver here on the map, not so much in the way of snow for places like Grouse Mountain and Whistler, for example. Okay, moving along, number six takes us to my part of the world, down around New Zealand, where we've got the largest stormy system at the moment on the planet down here in the Southern Ocean, which is very normal. But it is producing this surge of severe weather for the southeastern corner of Australia, New Zealand's South Island, and the lower portion 
of the North Island. Snow in the South Island will be heavy at times. We've got some pretty big accumulation going on in the more remote parts of the mountains, but 100 millimetres of rain forecast over on the west coast. And over in Australia, you've got gale force winds. Uh, Hobart's got gusts over 110 kilometres an hour, and around Victoria, 100 kilometres an hour. Incidentally, that area right there up in the Alps is also where the 5.8 earthquake was the other day, that damaging earthquake that impacted Melbourne. Very rare. Now it's back to the usual normal windy weather. Number seven on our list, well this isn't really extreme weather, this is just more fascinating to me. This takes us down into parts of Africa and Madagascar, and that's what I wanted to show you. Look at the impact Madagascar has on the wind. That southeasterly or easterly wind hits the island and just splits apart. So this area up here is a plateau, it's about a kilometre above sea level, very low down on this side, so in comes the wind, Big, big rain clouds build up along that eastern side, but the plateau where the capital is, um, likely to get a bit of an easterly breeze, and then on the other side, much calmer as you go in towards parts of Africa and down towards South Africa, lighter winds down there as well. Moving over to the other side of the Southern Hemisphere, and we're back into uh, parts of South America now, where we've got hot and cold mixing together for number eight. So up around this zone, we're about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius or 95 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit and it's humid. So very, very hot weather in this zone here up around places like La Paz. But you go over towards Peru, temperatures drop a lot as you head into coastal areas and in fact, heavy snow through the mountains, through the Andes in that part of the Americas. Number nine on our list, this is showing wave heights, and the biggest waves in the world at the moment are actually in the Australia-New Zealand zone, over 10 metres, these waves, very, very big, six, uh, uh, yeah, 10 metres, uh, six to 10 metres, I should say, right across that green zone, and the yellow zone is the 10 metre one, but over here, this is where it starts, so it starts really around Cape Town, and just gets bigger and bigger and bigger all the way across to New Zealand. Stormy system after stormy system down here at the moment. Why aren't the swells going right into Antarctica? Because of the ice caps, the ice shelf, which is all the way in that zone there in the pale blue. And number 10 on our list in the same part of the world shows the largest high pressure zone on planet Earth at the moment. And again, it stretches all the way from South Africa, Madagascar, into Perth, Australia, Western Australia, and it fades out around about Adelaide. So that's an enormous area of high pressure, and that's why you're seeing those huge waves, the squash zone between high pressure and stormy low pressure. This is the squash zone in between the two, and it just acts like a big westerly wall of wind, and it lifts up the wave heights, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now, but very calm further to the north. You can see the wind still gently coming through, places like Mauritius getting a very lovely easterly breeze. And that is all from me. Before I go, the image of the day takes us right up to Antarctica, <laughs> Antarctica, the Arctic, the opposite, up to the Arctic Circle, and right there is the North Pole, so I'm a little bit frustrated that this low itself isn't right over the top of it, but very close to it anyway. And I just thought that was an interesting image because Antarctica at the other end of the scale uh, always has high pressure over the South Pole, but the North Pole with all the sea around it uh, shows low pressure instead. So quite an interesting extreme difference from one end of the world to the other. That is all from me. Thanks for all the great comments on YouTube. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again on Monday with our next top 10 global weather extremes. <music>